This is a picture of the oldest tree in the world. It's called the Brissacone Pine Trees in Southern California. They're in the White Mountains, way up in the mountains, a very inhospitable climate, a very little rain. The Brissacone Pine, the largest one, they call it the oldest one, I'm sorry, they call it the Methuselah Tree is the nickname for it, for obvious reasons. The Methuselah Tree is uh, 4,300 years old. Now you need to understand, tree ring dating is not an exact science. Trees, the rings on a tree do not indicate summer, winter, summer, winter. They can indicate lots of rain, no rain, lots of rain, no rain. I met a guy a few weeks ago at a church I was at. He said, Brother Hovind, I have been raising trees to make walking sticks, professional, expensive walking sticks for rich people. <laughs> I didn't know there's a market for that, but that's what he does. He carves these fancy walking sticks for people. He says, I have raised thousands of trees and made these walking sticks. He said, I raised my trees for seven years cut them down, and they always have an average of 11 rings in seven years. Well, how do you get 11 rings in seven years if they're annual rings? See, they aren't annual rings. So tree ring dating is a far cry from an exact science, especially with these trees because they're such a gnarled mess. I mean, they kind of grow this way a while, and then they grow this way a while, and it's just not a simple science for counting these. And you don't want to cut it down to count the rings because then you found the age, but you killed the tree. So they've got a special drill. It's like a little pipe. It's hollow, and it drills a, a pipe into the tree, a core, and pulls out the middle part, just like they do with the ice rings, only these are much smaller. The entire pipe is about the size of the lead in a pencil. And they drill all the way into the tree and pull out this real skinny core, lay it down, and they have to count the rings under a microscope because these trees grow about an inch in 100 years. So in an inch, you've got 100 rings to count. When you look at the trees, they're ugly, you will swear they're dead, but they're not, they're still alive. And they don't mark which one is the oldest because they're afraid souvenir hunters are going to go up there and say, I want to have a piece of this one. And there's only so many, only so many pieces of it you can get, and pretty soon it's, it's not there anymore. But if you go up to the White Mountains in Southern California and see the bristlecone pine trees, the oldest one is 4,300 years old. Some will say, no, there's, they found one that's 4,600. Some will say, well, by overlapping tree ring dating with tree stumps and logs found in Indian uh, dwellings and stuff like this, the ancient cliff dwellings, they overlap these tree ring and they get a tree ring sequence that goes back 8,000 years. Well, this is real questionable because tree ring dating, first, is not an exact science. Secondly, two trees can grow side by side and have very different ring pattern. If there's a big tree and a little tree, the big one gets all the sunlight, the little one doesn't get any. One day the big one dies, now the little one gets all the sunlight, so his growth pattern is much different. You can have two trees on opposite sides of the same mountain getting different amounts of rainfall because when, hot air, when air goes up, it drops all of its water. When it comes down the mountain, it, it absorbs water. That's called the rain shadow in Washington State. One side of the mountains is loaded with trees. As soon as you get over the top, it's, it's basically desert because as air rises, it cools and drops its moisture. When it comes down, it warms up and absorbs moisture. So you get what's called a rain shadow on one side of the mountain. And so trees can be affected by this. So what they've tried to do to discredit the creationists on this tree ring dating question is try to find tree ring sequences where they find a tree that has several rings. You know, they look at the ring pattern where they're kind of close and then they're far apart and then they're kind of close for several years and then far apart for a few years. They, they would consider these to be the good years when it got lots of rain. These would be the bad years when it didn't get much rain. Then they find another log someplace else and they try to line it up. You know, so they got good years, bad years, good years, bad years, and this one will extend farther and this one will extend farther this way. And so they've stretched their tree overlapping tree ring dating to, I don't know what the number is, probably close to 6,000 years. But this would be based on all sorts of very obvious assumptions and it wouldn't hold up two seconds in a court of law. The problem is it doesn't have to hold up in a court of law. It just has to be taught in school. You just have to convince the kids of it. That's where the problem comes in right there. So the oldest living tree is 4,300 years old. Now the creationist solution to this is very simple. There was a flood 4,400 years ago that destroyed the world. And it would have wiped out everything. However, many trees can be uprooted, float around in a flood, and land, and start growing again. I mean, don't they pull, tr transplant bushes and trees all the time? So in a flood situation, the flood, Noah was in the ark for over a year. 
That does not mean every square inch of the world was flooded for an entire year. It just means all we know is Noah was in the ark for a year. Certain sections of ground might have only been underwater for a month. The crust of the earth would be lifting and sinking, and there would be shuffling and water sliding back and forth, carrying sediments with it, lots of uh, mud layers being laid down during this flood. So when I say the flood lasted a year, it's really technically more correct to say Noah was in the ark for a year. He hit bottom in the seventh month. Now, if you have floating log mats of stuff floating around that's been uprooted and drifting around, the seeds, of course, are going to be able to survive soaked in this water for a short time and then re-germinate. Go any place where there's been a flood, after the flood water goes down, the mud out there, things start to sprout very quickly. Actually, many countries depend upon the annual floods to give them a new layer of sediment, new layer of topsoil. And they come in and build dikes and levees, and now the soil gets depleted after a time. It's one of the problems in, in, along the central part of the United States. But the tree ring dating, I just want to point out, is certainly not an exact science. But the oldest one they've counted clearly and pretty certainly is 4,300 rings. Assumption is 4,300 years. It, it's, it's that at a maximum, probably less than that as far as its age. So the creationist has no problem with the oldest tree. says, hey, the flood was 4,400 years ago. Not a problem.